Hello and welcome to the second Kaltopo tutorial video. In this video, we're primarily going to be covering layers. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, if you remember from our previous video, if you want to access a map that you were working on, all you have to do is go to caltopo.com, log into your account, and click on your email in the top left-hand corner. That'll bring up this pop-up window, and you can toggle to the Your Maps tab, and then simply just click on the map that you were working on, and that'll bring you right back to it. All right, we'll go ahead and get started with layers here. So if I want to access my layers, I'm going to go ahead and move my cursor to the top right-hand corner over this icon here, and that'll bring up this drop-down box. And this gives me several different options of my base layer, stacking additional layers, and then a bunch of map overlays, which we'll go over in a little bit. So we'll start with the base layer. If I want to change my base layer, I'm going to move my cursor over the base layer and click on it. And you can see here that that'll bring up this drop-down tab right here. Map Builder Topo and Map Builder Hybrid are two Caltopo specific layers that bring in a bunch of features from some various data sets. Scan 7.5 is your typical USGS 7.5 map. Forest Service 2013 and Forest Service 2016 are two Forest Service specific maps, so keep in mind that these layers won't work outside of national forest boundaries. Marine charts is going to give you marine charts. Obviously, that's only going to show up over the ocean. FAA sectional map is your FAA aircraft map that you can see here. NAIP 2013, 2015, and then 2011 to 2013 is both aerial imagery from various years. False color IR is false color infrared. Your Google layers, such as Google Maps, Terrain, Satellite, and then Google's hybrid layer. There's also shaded relief layers, which you can see here that this is only going to show up as shaded relief, and we'll go over how you can stack that to add relief to an otherwise two-dimensional map. Other maps, such as National Park Service visitor maps, or U.S. Forest Service visitor maps are handy, and again, those are only going to show up in U.S. Forest Service areas or national parks. Historic maps from their respective years. Open Street Map. This map is great for more urban areas. It's similar to Google Maps. Same with Open Cycle Map. TF Outdoors. And then our satellites, the weekly high resolution satellite, and I can toggle this from true color to false color, red or green, as well as I can toggle from the date latest up into three years ago. We also have the daily low resolution satellites, and you'll see here that now I'm going to have to zoom much further out in order for the picture to become clear. And for the daily low res, I can also toggle the different satellites as well as the date. And then we have our nightly low res satellite. And again, that one only is going to be on the Verge satellite, but I can toggle the date. So we'll go ahead and now talk about stacking layers. So say I have this, we'll use USGS 7.5. And if you'll notice here that it has contour lines on it, but to the eye, it just appears as a two-dimensional map. So if I want to go ahead and add different features to it, I can go ahead and stack additional map layers by simply cl clicking on this green stack new layer here. And then I'll just click on this box, which will bring up this drop-down list. Now, if I wanted to add a shaded relief, for example, I'll just go with normal. I can add that just by either moving the sliding scale to the right, or I can enter in a specific number, say I want 22%, and that'll give me that exact 22%. If I wanted to add aerial imagery, I could stack another layer and then go down to, we'll say, NAIP. And I can toggle this using the sliding scale, or I can enter in a specific percentage, we'll say 17. Now, if I want to delete a layer, I have a couple options. I can either just move this sliding scale all the way down to the bottom, and that'll leave the layer in place, but it won't actually show up on my map at the moment. Alternatively, I can simply click this red X, and that'll delete the layer. We'll go over some of the map overlays now. Contours obviously adds contour lines, 
and I can change those from mixed to 40 foot, 10 foot, 20 meter, or 5 meter. Map Builder Overlay is going to overlay major roads, trails, dirt roads, that sort of thing. Slope Angle Shading, this one is particularly popular amongst backcountry skiers. Um, you can see here that I can tell the angle of certain slopes and there's a color key up in the top or right below the layer and I can change this from fixed to gradient if I'd like. Land Management Layer, if I zoom out a little bit you can see here that everything in the green is going to be US Forest Service whereas the stuff that's not colored is going to be private land. Motor Vehicle MVUM, this is for off-highway use, and if I click on this blue MVUM info, this will bring up a specific key for this layer that gives me some more details in regards to what the different colors and lines refer to. Fire History is going to give me history of fires in the area. Um, so I'll go down here, you can see 2008, 2018, 2001, Fire activity, on the other hand, will give me active fires, and I can toggle different satellites, adding smoke or progression to see how the fire is growing. And if I want more information on this, I'll just click on this blue fire info here. This will give me a color key as well as a hyperlink to a blog post that's helpful if you're more interested in that. Sun exposure layer, I can change this from today. We'll say I want to go February at 10.30 a.m. And this layer will show me the specific sun exposure for the time that I've elected. So, for example, everything in yellow right now is in the sun, whereas the blue is going to be in the shade. Weather forecast, I can overlay temperature, and I can toggle this from a 24-hour low or high, and then I can change the low and the high ends of the temperature range that I'm looking at. And then you can see here for a key, I can either look right below the layer or up in the top right hand corner of this bar. Precipitation is similar. I can toggle from 24 to 48 hour precip as well as 24 and 48 hour snow. And then I can change the low number and the high numbers of that as well. Max wind speed, I can change 12 hour speed, 24 hour, 36 hour speeds, as well as 12, 24 and 36 hour gusts. And you can see here that I have a similar key at the bottom of this layer and up in the top right hand corner. Wind plot is going to overlay wind and I can change from speed to gusts now all the way up to 36 hours. And you can see here that I'm going to have a key in the same places. National Weather Service forecast grid is going to give me 2.5 kilometer grid center points on my map. And I can change from 24 hour low or high precipitation, snow, wind and gusts. I can add any specific maps that I've made or any shared maps. Real-time data, snow tell sites, water gauges, or weather stations. Keep in mind for the real-time data, often that is dependent on where you're mapping as this information isn't everywhere. For example, water gauges are typically found near dams and weather stations can often be found at airports. We'll talk a little bit about some of the custom layer options. If I want to add more of a custom layer, I can go over here to the left hand side and click on the green add new layer. The view shed analysis layer is handy for something such as a radio repeater. I can drag this circle to wherever I want my object to go. I can name the layer name and then the eye altitude is going to be in meters above the ground and the default is 20. So I'll change it to two meters above the ground, press OK, and you can see here that it's gonna shade everything in red that it would hit from that location. If I wanna edit that, all I have to do is click on the pencil. I can drag my object as well as change the altitude, press OK, and that'll save it again. If I wanna delete this, I'm just gonna simply press on this red X right here. Custom Relief can add uh, Custom Relief Shading. DEM Shading, Digital Elevation Model Shading. This one is also handy for backcountry skiing and avalanches. So let's say I want to add slope angle from 15 degrees all the way to 45 degrees. I'll just click this checks box and I will change these two toggle bars. I'll just hit Add Rule and then Save and that'll show up on my map. If I want to edit that one, Again, same thing, I'm just going to click on the pencil icon. If I want to delete it, I'm just going to click on the red X. 
sunlight analysis layer is similar to the sunlight layer overlay. I can add a name on this layer and I can change the month as well as the first of the month or the 15th of the month, kind of the halfway point. And then I can change the time of day. So we'll go with 9.30 a.m. Again, with this one, I can edit it by clicking on the pencil or I can delete it by pressing on the red X. Archived Modus is going to give me archived satellites, and I can change it from Aqua or Terra, as well as the specific date that I want to look at. Geospatial Image, I can overlay or georeference a map of my own that I have. And Custom Source, I can add a custom source. That wraps it up for this video. Thank you for watching.